One of my all-time favorite movies. It's it's definitely, ooh, it might be top three, actually, is the original Pirates of the Caribbean. I didn't like it when it first came out because it was really popular and all that stuff, and I wanted to be contrarian at the ripe old age of 13, but after watching it about, oh, a couple dozen times, I still think it's great. I haven't watched it in a while, but I'm sure it all holds up, and one of the major reasons behind that is because one of your boy's first major crushes was definitely Keira Knightley. Like, she was looking so fine back then. And that is, if I'm to build a bitch from the ground up, she has the ideal body type for me. For me, okay? A lot of guys, like, they got that, does she got ass though mentality? That's not for me. I just like them tall, I like them thin, I like them cute. Not like off the rails, like the big huge lips and all that extra shit. I just like an attractive bitch who's just tall and spinnable. That's just me. That's just me. And now, because she's out on the stroll, trying to promote some Disney Plus project or some shit like that, listen, Disney Plus is, and everybody's getting a goddamn streaming show. Like, they've, here, I'll even pull this up, because this is just absolutely so ridiculous. Like, yo, they're doing a Grease prequel. Yeah, that, what, from the 70s? Uh, the, uh, Olivia Newton-John and John Travolta. The, another show that I've seen a whole bunch. This is real. Grease, Rise of the Pink Ladies. Th they've run out of ideas, bro. And, yeah, and at that moment, you knew Hollywood is officially out of ideas. Like, who asked for this? Like, I know, and a bunch of people are just gonna bitch and moan and whine and complain. Oh, everybody got the race swapped. It's like, nobody asked for that at all whatsoever. That's just the moment, you know, there's nothing left. It's just, Hollywood has officially run out of ideas. And they're just trying to make safe bets on properties. I know that there's a Grease 2, never seen it, but that's something that doesn't need to be a franchise, okay? It would be like running back a Caddyshack and doing a Rise of the Gopher. It just doesn't make any fucking sense. But yeah, Kira's got a show. Funnily enough, it's gonna be on Disney+, Plus, the Boston Strangler or something like that. We'll get to it when we get to the source document. But now, ah, just like every other woman that's out there okay like listen i really enjoyed her in uh, probably in the original trilogy okay i said uh, i fucking with a passion i hate the fourth pirates of the caribbean film that movie fucking sucks still have yet to see the fifth one but i like the first two uh, a bit the third one's a little bit wonky that's one of those first films where i walked out of it and i was trying to tell myself no it's good but in the back of my mind it's like wow movies are actually pretty shit sometimes so i was trying to rationalize the third one i might like it a little bit more but again i haven't watched anything enough wobbling about me Kira knightley was in those first three films she had a pretty incredible pretty expansive role in the first film yeah she was the damsel in distress and she did a pretty decent job and in the second one she got more agency and in the third one she was a fucking chinese ch pirate that er, yeah, pirate captain that took over for Chow Yun Fat. Like, she was all over the board when it came to that character. And, yeah, it, it was pretty decent. And again, it's been a minute since I've watched that. But outside of that, like, uh, she did what? Pride and Prejudice? And then I don't remember seeing her in anything after that, okay? But now, like every other woman who was given an opportunity, like, okay, yeah, she got her foot in her door, in the door, because she's wildly attractive. And then, okay, what do you do after that? Well, in her case, nothing. And now history looks back at her. Oh yeah, she's that chick from that pirate movie who kind of looks like a dollar store Natalie Portman. Really close, though. Really attractive. Wonder whatever happened to her. Well, now she's running that whole gamut where it's like, oh my god, I felt like I was typecast because of my attractiveness. It's like, come on, stop rewriting history. I felt very stuck. Kira Knightley blames Johnny Depp's 4.5 billion dollars pirates of the caribbean franchise for turning her into a sex symbol at just 18 you auditioned you accepted three i think she's in the fifth one I, again haven't watched it or anything like that um you cashed those paychecks they were good they gave you an opportunity you squandered it and now you're just trying to lament your failures in hollywood and voice it upon anybody else you can the hardware will change but the software always remains the same Kira knightley's role as elizabeth swan in pirates of the caribbean propelled her to international stardom at a young age i didn't know she was that young at the time i guess in the first one uh she was in on and around 18 17 18 and then yeah going on 
because, oh, when did Dead Man's Chest come out? 2006? Like, it was a little bit afterwards. The movie's fine. Oh, God, that's stupid. That whole Islander plot in order to get back Jack Sparrow at the beginning, if you just chop that off and you start the film from there, it's actually pretty decent. But, God, that's filler and fucking worthless. Anyways, um, however, the intense fame and societal pressure to fit into the stereotypical female public persona... What are you talking about? The actor feeling constrained and frustrated. Speaking to Harper's Bazaar, uh, Knightley revealed that she struggled to shed the sexualized image projecting uh, into or onto her character, which hindered her career growth. Um, I don't believe you. I don't believe you because there's many women who get a leg up in the industry. Uh, what's her nuts there? Uh, Zendaya, one of the only up and coming actresses that I actually know her name of. Mm, she was a model, still is a model as far as I know. Um, isn't she also like a singer or something like that? Like, And she's fairly attractive. Not my cup of tea, but that would be ridiculous to say otherwise. She is objectively attractive. Now, She's much more than that. She's been in a whole bunch of different things. Like, she's a part of the Spider-Man franchise. Whatever incarnation we're in at this point. Uh, she's going to be in more of those Dune films that uh, French-Canadian Christopher Nolan's doing. Like That is, give or take, the exact same career path. And many women before her have done the exact same thing and have catapulted into a very long career. You just flamed out early. It happens. It happens across the board, regardless of sex. It's just, guys don't have that, well, I was sexualized at the time and I just flamed out. But let's hear rationality, because we got the source document here, okay? Your boy likes to go uh, right back to the bottom of this. Uh, we don't need somebody else's recap. Uh, in the midst of lifting like a veil above the London skyline. Okay, I'm kind of regretting going to the source document because this is going to be flowery nonsense. The chill scarcely offset the early spring sun. Kira Knightley is standing on the top or on the rooftop balcony of the Elizabeth Taylor suite at Dorchester. Oh, okay, cool. It sounds like her life has really sucked post Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, and smiling happily for Bazaar's photographers with uh, the panoramic vista Hyde Park behind her it was so very cold yeah that's nice and fantastic and yo okay so if she was 17 back in the day when filming pirates of the caribbean and that was 2003 it's 20 years later so yeah she looks good approaching 40 like i wouldn't be able to tell the difference fuck i couldn't even tell the difference back in the cut so shout out to her i don't want to be typecast but you still don't look too much older than you did back in the day if it was that big of an issue and if that was the crux that was there you could have done voice acting, you could have done literally anything, yet you have that attached to you. It's kind of like whenever Carrie Fisher's name gets brought up, regardless of her debilitating crack, er, not crack, she just did the powdered stuff. She could continue to get work because she was Princess Leia. You were Elizabeth Swan. He didn't do much after that. Oh well. Oh, but I didn't know she took out some time to have a family. Congratulations to her, that's the most important thing that you can do in your life, okay? There's nothing wrong with that at all whatsoever, but... She's lamenting the fact that she has a seven-year-old and a four-year-old. All right. Knightley has uh, been open about the unfair demands of motherhood. What's unfair about it? You get to have a family. You will have people that will be looking after you later in life. People that will love you in one of the only true expressions of unconditional love that there is. Railing against the gender scripts that are, are written into society. Oh my god. Does it make sense that now she's railing about, I was made to be a sex symbol back in the day, but then I became a mother. And now that the children are old enough to look after themselves, now I can fight the patriarchy. Ugh. In 2018, when she contributed an essay to Scarlett Gillis's connect er, collection, Feminists Don't Wear Pink. Now, feminists also die alone. So you keep talking about this shit and you keep saying how it's unfair to be a mother and then eventually your kids are going to get wind of that and it's like, oh, okay, cool. I see what time it is. You hold... And if she's writing stuff like this, is she holds a little bit of resentment for her children. So that opportunity for un... Conditional love. Oh, it's starting to slip away. But yes, detailing the effects of having a child on her body. Yes, it's not a unique phenomenon, stupid. On accepting her trophy at Bazaar's Woman of the Year Awards five years ago. Wow, that sucks. Uh, for her performance uh, when she was French uh, as a French writer, Colette. She echoed the sentiment by declaring that she had been a light air leaking milk even as she played uh, these convention-breaking roles. What the fuck are we talking about? But today she seems more sanguine uh, in her group of friends, the men, 
You, wait, you have male friends? Sorry to hear about that. Are heavily involved in the rigors of family life. Unless they're couples. I don't know, is she married? The way that she's talking, she doesn't have a man in her life that she respects. The guys are super active. Maybe that's not normal, but in my situation, it has to be a partnership. <laughs> and that's why you're writing all this feminist propaganda. It has to be a partnership. No, you have to fucking follow a good leader. The heavy lifting of childcare has to be acknowledged. It is, okay? There, There's no paper. There's no collection of... Oh, fathers writing down all of these stories. It's just expected of the father to perform. Otherwise, there's a whole bunch of what you want to rail against, the societal expectations that the father still has to provide for those kids. And if not, he can be thrown in jail. He can be held in contempt of court. He cannot claim bankruptcy on child support. That motherfucker has to pay. Doesn't work the other way around for women. They can go ahead and terminate a pregnancy. They can go ahead and give up a child whenever they want to. All the heavy lifting. You have everything paid for you and if you can't there's a government more than willing to put you on the dole so just just stop it it's hard work it's vital it's undervalued no i've been hearing about this shit how hard work it is for a very 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 long time it's hard work but you want the guy who pr provided for you who took care of you during your pregnancy who still continues to hold up his end of the bargain now he wants you to encroach he wa you want him to do even more but you still want it to be a partnership makes a lot of sense and it's so exhausting yes it's so exhausting it's so terrible imagine being this bitch's kids just how little regard she holds for them all of my jobs are so hard to raise these kids you don't mention how great being a mother is or anything like that you just consider it a burden in the way that it just took away your your failing career let's keep it a buck during filming, the hours are unpredictable and extreme. I worked out. I needed three people to do what one full-time parent did. Well, obviously you're not hiring the correct people if they're so terrible. You need uh, three people to do one person's job. That's just your terrible hiring practices. When you hear somebody say, I'm not, oh, I'm just staying home with the kids. That's not a just. No, that's a wonderful thing. That means that you have a fantastic family unit. Your unit, you have a father, you have a husband that's in the picture, taking care of the family. He's out there doing what he's expected to do. And then you still have the audacity to nag the poor motherfucker who is out there working eight, ten. 12 hours a day you didn't take out the garbage while she sat at home a folded laundry while the kids were out at school like just fucking stop it like many women oh okay yes exactly you want to talk about being uh in an upscale suite but then she's she's just like all of you guys why is anybody taking this bitch seriously at this point like many women, Knightley dislikes being asked about all the perennial struggles between family and professional responsibilities, but she'll write papers about it, though. After all, men are never asked the same question. What are you talking about? Again, it's just supposed that the father is supposed to do all of this stuff. You don't ask him because he knows the answer to the question and he just goes out and does it. And women, for a very long time, being a mother, that's all they wanted to do. That's what they did, and they didn't need to be looked at by... And again, this doesn't come from guys. This just comes from envious, box-wined bitches, okay? The ones who know that they made a terrible decision. I'm just gonna chase my career. No, you just got a whole bunch of student debt on a worthless fucking degree, and you work at Starbucks, and you cry yourself to sleep while your cat pisses on the sofa. A guy will never look at a mother who's raising children and say, Oh, she just stays at home. That doesn't happen. So yeah, she's just going to continue to babble about motherhood, but, well, actually not. She's just kind of a, a middle manager for the for the crew of people that are around her. Her three degrees away from actually being a mother. Her latest film, a 1960s thriller based on the notorious case of the Boston Strangler, whose family relocated to the East Coast City in November of 2021. Ooh, you moved to Boston. Oh, interesting. In what they hope to be an adventure. Ah, together with Wrighton. Oh, you didn't take your husband's last name? Hmm, that sucks. I can understand for branding purposes, but that's one of those telltale signs that you don't like him like that if you don't take his last name. She had planned the two-month trip, putting Eddie into school and organizing playgroups for Delilah. Delilah is the seven-year-old and Eddie's the four-year-old, I think. But yeah, as you can see, the kid's away at school. I could have that backwards anyways, but yeah, one kids in school and the other one's getting taken care of but oh we need to go on a vacation growing up i don't remember my family like i can give you a little peek behind the curtain on this uh until both my sister and i were of school age my mother ran a daycare at home as my father was out working 
So yeah, we were raised until school age with my mother around and then her also looking after ooh, a couple of different families at any given point in time. And then once we reached school age, uh, I think mom continued doing after school care until uh, I remember what house we were in. So I'm just trying to get the trying to get the dates right, probably until about 10 or 11, because I remember the first summer that we had off where we had the ability to just, you know, look after ourselves. Yeah, it was probably about 10 at that time. So whatever that puts you at the fourth or fifth grade, something like that. But long story short, um, my parents and we still are just working class people and we don't have the ability to just, you know, at a moment's notice, just go on out and just go away for a two month trip because all my sparse acting career is just so hectic. Like it's these women who don't really want kids like that, who think that they have some sort of a career that's going to keep them happy and healthy into their 60s, 70s and 80s. Take a look. There is nothing written. There is nothing down in right or on film on record of an old feminist saying that, you know what, I really made a good choice. There's a lot of evidence to the contrary, but just nothing in the affirmative. Okay, so here's where we get to the pirate stuff, because this is actually, there's a lot of little nuggets in here to parse out as well. Okay, Knightley never felt entirely at ease with being in the spotlight, but she was a model turned actress turned regretful mother so okay whatever uh but she uses her platform to champion the causes she cares about everything except for her kids because i don't really see a lot of that though oh through uh, her recent roles uh thinks of the activist sally alexander in a misbehavior the whistleblower catherine gunn in official secrets oh uh, there's, there's just so many problems with that in and of itself when you just inundate yourself with this type of trash level information all the time it's no wonder that you grow resentment of your conventional femininity. You were grow you were brought up one way. You are being told by nefarious, bad faith actors that you should be acting another way. You adopt all of your shoulds, regretting and resenting all of your is, and no wonder you're just continuing to bellyache and then just trying to rewrite history. It puts you on the fucking map, lady. Uh, she channels the spirit of rebellion and seeks to shatter the confined society put on women. What 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 restrictions in today's day and age are actually placed on women? I see a whole bunch of empowerment shit that's out there and a whole bunch of shit that is justified by tearing down men. I, do, I legitimately don't see any confines placed on women. There's a whole bunch of incentives for women. Title IX exemptions. Hiring practices where they're only looking specifically for women. All of the marketing, all of the advertisement aimed directly at women. Tell me what societal constraints are placed on women, especially ones that are this high up there. There aren't any. There aren't. Not in the Western world. You can talk differently about the Eastern, the Third World, whatever you want. But I also don't see those places bitching, moaning, whining, and complaining about a bunch of different feminist talking points. Who's happier? Who's happier? The side of the world that is overwhelmingly placed on antidepressant medications, women who year after year report lower levels of self-described happiness. Sounds like, it sounds like a lot of self-enforced depression, self-enforced constraints. Meanwhile, you know, you, you want to look over there and say, like, oh, all of those Muslim countries where all those women have to cover up. They're being oppressed. You ever talk to one of them? No, no, no. Those are the lower people. You wouldn't want to talk to them anyways. All of those women, they want to dress like that because they want to dress like that stop listening to all the propaganda that's against islam man it's it's a very different story than what we've been told over the past 20 some odd years she credits her parents so we'll go back to this goofy bitch uh she credits her parents a sharman mcdonald a writer and will knightley an actor uh, while instilling a strong sense of equality in her and subverting the idea of gender roles. How's that working out for you? It was never an issue that my mother earned more than my dad. It's like, yeah, she probably had a safe, cushy job, but then that also tells you that they kind of adhered to gender roles because, what, she was a staff writer somewhere? Terrific. And he was an actor? Of course, he was taking a little bit more risk. You don't want to acknowledge that now, would you? It was never an issue that my mother earned more than my dad. Tuck it, uh, she says, uh, tucking into her main course of brill with lentils and mussels. Is she cooking or something like that? Okay, whatever. It was only when she became famous at age 17 that she was aware of the expectations put upon her. At 17? 
What's the old trope that uh, women like this like to say? Uh, the women, women are more emotionally stable. Uh, they mature faster. You didn't realize this until you're 17? Very interesting. Uh, I had quite an entrance into adult life, an extreme landing because of the experience of fame at a very early age. Okay, uh, says Knightley. It was a very funny place where women are being are meant to sit publicly, and I never felt cuff or comfortable with that. It was a big jolt. What are you talking about? Are you talking about the fact that your breakthrough role was cast in Victoria era in England, like the late 1800s into the early 1900s? Like, is, is that the problem that you were having with? Oh no, it was, I think it was earlier than that, right? Late 17 into the 18s, right? My mistake, sorry about that. Part, she says, playing and presented a particular form of femininity that was not, she says, her lived experience. Oh my god, Somebody, you're just trying to rewrite history. If things would have worked out for you, you wouldn't be having this nose turn up at it. Just take a look at what happened with Scarlett Johansson. She was totally fine with being a sex symbol. Up until the point where she could no longer pull off being a sex symbol. And it's like, oh, I don't know why I was being sexualized in Iron Man 2. Because you were the hottest fucking bitch on earth. Kira Knightley, back in the cut. You were damn fine. And now you're a mom pushing 40. It's like you can't compete with your younger self. Like, just stop. But yes, I was being judged on what I was projecting. Yeah, um, people were critiquing your acting. Like, what, what are you talking about? Come on now. She's referring to her breakout turn 20 years ago as Elizabeth Swan in Pirates of the Caribbean. It's also a condemnation because I can't really think, like, outside of... Oh, um, actually, no, everything that I can think of that's on that level was started before that. Like, Harry Potter was started just a little bit before that. Didn't the first one come out in 99? Anyways, or at least 2000. Books came out before that, right? Yeah. Like, there are very few things that are on that level. Nothing on her resume at all whatsoever. But you're telling me it's 17 years old. You weren't dealing with people that were more hands-on earlier than that, even at school. I don't know, maybe you were privately schooled, maybe you were tutored or something like that. That's a totally different animal. But growing up, doing your thing? Come on, man. I, Not even I'm that big of a misogynist. Women, you know what the fuck you're dealing with well before this anyway. So just stop rewriting history. Come on. Uh, she was uh, she was the object of everybody's lust, nightly concedes of Elizabeth Swan. No. Uh, do you not remember the movie? Like, it's been a couple of years since I've watched it, but I seem to recall she was only the object, not of lust, because Will Turner really did love Elizabeth Swan. She was the object of Captain Barbosa's desire because she claimed to be Elizabeth Turner, the daughter of bootstrap Bill Turner. They needed her blood. The whole lust thing had nothing to do with it. In fact, they just cut your hand back at the Isle de, or Isle de la Muerta. Right, that's what they called it. They just cut your hand because they just needed a little bit of blood. And they were going to spill all of Will's blood once he was there. And he outed himself as being the only living offspring of bootstrap bill turner so you weren't lusted after in the confines of the film like whatever people thought of you at the time like a 13 year old me thought that you were banging but you can't rewrite history like this i'm i'm, I'm not gonna let it happen knightley can uh goes on to say uh not that she uh doesn't have a lot of fight in her yeah you could see her character arc through the next two films as well like you become the the pirate you orchestrate jack sparrow getting eaten by the kraken like you use your sexuality to put it's actually a pretty decent representation okay i think it's actually pretty fair about the best way that women can use their conflict resolution like you knew that you know davy jones was after captain jack sparrow you know you seduced him you got him cuffed up to the black pearl and kraken took it down like bro, if you want to take a look at strong empowered women it was a pretty good depiction all things considered man and people still remember that shit 20 years later. Nobody fucking remembers Love Actually, a Pride and Prejudice, Atonement. Like, you were probably more sexualized in those films as opposed to Pirates of the Caribbean. So, somebody's just trying to get headlines for their shitty streaming show after this. We'll just read a little bit more of this because I think we've fairly debunked it, right? Okay, so the roles afterwards were... Oh, yeah, sorry, my mistake. Uh, not that she doesn't have a lot of fight in her, but it was interesting coming from being really tomboyish, come on, uh, to getting projected as quite the opposite. Then why did you audition for the role? Why? I felt very constrained. Well, facts don't care about your fucking feelings. I felt very stuck. So the roles afterwards were trying to break out of that by playing the damsel in distress, by playing the princess in the castle needing to be saved. 
All right. She considers the period after 2003 and 2008 a very tricky five-year window, though... Uh, yeah, though she appeared in high-profile films such as Love Actually, Pride and Prejudice, and Atonement, her experience of feeling trapped impeded her, so she let herself get in front of herself. Oh, okay, cool. Why don't you take accountability? Because that would be a fun script, and more people would get behind you on that, but you could also play the victim card and get the social media sympathy, I guess. Yes, and she felt quite powerless, and now you're just getting photo shoots done for you. Fantastic. I didn't have a sense of how to articulate it. I very much felt like I was caged in a thing I didn't understand. Yes, of course. Now you're just trying to extend your relevancy by hopping on the Johnny Depp bandwagon, but it, it, shit's just not gonna fucking work for you. I was incredibly hard on myself. I was never good enough. No, I think the industry kind of affirmed that. And the fact that you got multiple roles off of being the Let's keep it a buck. Fourth lead in one of the biggest fr er, film franchise out there. Like you weren't up up to snuff. Now, to be fair, you were up against stiff competition like Orlando Bloom. Yeah, pretty decent actor. Not great or anything like that. But Johnny Depp and Jeffrey Rush. Like, yeah, you could have learned a thing or two from those guys. Like, those are a, a dearth of acting talent, acting knowledge. So, yeah, instead of making connections and uh, honing in your craft, what were you doing during that time? I would imagine, what, early 20s, having all of the fame in the world by one of the biggest, uh, by being one of the faces of the biggest franchise at the time? We all know what time it is. Come on, not stupid. You were feeling yourself at that point in time, and now in revisionist history, you're regretting the choices that you made, and instead of taking personal responsibility for it, now you're just trying to chalk it up to the game, and it doesn't work like that. I was utterly single-minded apparently not because you would have had a longer career i was so ambitious i was so driven i was always trying to get better and better and improve which is an exhausting way to live your life well that's what men have to do every single fucking day i don't take days off you guys don't take days off we just fucking do it for men there's an invisible burden of performance and we have to do something listen a 17 year old dude ain't just fucking rocking up to the set unless he can do something you 17 years old looking uh, you're a little bit older in this picture but even yeah back in the cut looking like that you got that job because you fit the part. Women, every single day, 18, 19, 20 years old, they can open up an OnlyFans account, make hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. At 21 through 25, they can just go right into any club that they want, not have to pay the cover charge. They can be at a table with celebrities like that. 17 year old dude, you're fucking worthless. You have to, you have to go out you have to perform case in point johnny depp right there he wasn't doing fuck all until he got a shot proved his worth in nightmare on elm street right and then parlayed that into 21 jump street and then he became the legend that he is today but let's just stop lamenting your life choices you're a mother you have two beautiful kids i would imagine haven't seen them don't want to see them you have a family and you're trying to subvert all of those expectations and rewrite all the gender roles. I'm telling you this. You would be much more happy and much more pleased with your life if you would stop blaming everybody else. Stop blaming everybody else for what you don't have and start embracing what you do. You have a seven and a four year old who looks up to their mother for everything at this point in time. And you're just trying to blame the game. It's not going to work out well for you in the long term. I'm telling you that because, amen. I know in the future there's going to be a lot of angry old hoes and a lot of miserable women. We're starting to see all of those feminism lied to me papers start to come out. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that on a bunch. I, I don't want to see that from any woman that's out there, regardless of how spiteful and venomous they are right now. I see a world decaying around us and somebody who is cultivating the next generation. And I only want what's best for them. And I only want what's best for the women as well. But this Plea will fall on deaf ears and she'll just, you know, continue to bitch and moan and whine and complain because it's a fucking profitable business at this point in time. So at least if you're hearing this, take some of this to heart, employ some of these tactics, and maybe you'll be able to avoid the pitfalls of somebody who had a golden opportunity presented to them, pissed it all away, and is now complaining about it two decades later. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.